What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Beasley. Hope you all are staying positive and cool out there. I'm coming at y'all today with a review of The Real Housewives of Potomac Season 5, Episode 13. No shows and showdowns, so let's go ahead and get on to it. So we start off this episode, we see Giselle looking like J-Lo the Cookie Monster. She's going ring shopping. And at first, we're made to believe that she's going ring shopping for herself and Jamal, but then Juan shows up and it's like, okay, so she's going shopping for um, Robin's ring. So they pick out a few rings. I mean, they have a cute selection. At first, the first ring they pick up is like $59,000 and we're just like, no, that money could be used towards Robin's taxes. But Jamal like reiterates the fact that, you know, my budget's around like eight to ten. So they picked this um one ring, I think it was called like a mat a Marganite or Magonite ring. It's like a I think it's like a special type of diamond or like a cheaper type of diamond, I'm not sure. But they ended up picking up the ring and it was pretty cute. It was a pretty cute scene. So we go on, we see Monique. She is getting some packages prepared for her live podcast event. She's having her um I believe it was like a, her, a pastor, her pastor or her friend that's a pastor. His name is Pearl. That, fun fact, that's actually the same name as my car. But he was helping her get the whole, get the packages ready. And then once again, you know, they're talking about the fight. This infamous fight that we're going to keep on talking about throughout this whole entire season. But she kind of talks about how she regrets what happened and she was fully ready to go ahead and to apologize to Candace. But ever since Candace went ahead and filed those papers, she's like, no, I can't say anything now. Like, it's a legal matter at this point. But she's ready to showcase to the woman that she's changed and she wants these women to... Um, she basically just wants these women to like see her in her element. And she's also nervous at the fact that she still has yet to sell any tickets, which I really find... Hard to believe, like, Monique, with your platform, you should have been able to sell those tickets in no less than a week, but I digress. So she ends up calling the ladies one by one. She first calls Robin to invite her. Robin's kind of like on the fence, kind of like, uh, I'll see. Basically, like, it's like a soft no from her. She then calls Karen, and Karen agrees to come to the event. And then she then calls Wendy, and then Wendy just goes ahead and chastises her about not being like remorseful not taking accountability and i'm just like when do you act like she actually slapped you in the face in the process like i understand you guys are grown women and you want to um hold yourself um to a certain level of esteem but at the same time wendy like this this fight didn't affect you like it's not it's, it shouldn't be that deep towards you and I personally just feel like Wendy never liked Monique from the very jump. Ever since she met her in that one um, sip and see for Ashley. Like, ever since she met her in that scene, and then she saw that she was going so hard at Candace, she already made up her mind that, like, oh, Candace is my good girl. Like, I'm not about to betray her and be friends with the ops. So, Wendy already has in her mind that she doesn't like Monique. Like, it's already a given. So we see Karen and Ray go to a life coach because Ray's old ass doesn't, he's like against any type of therapy for some reason. And I'm not going to go blow by blow in this scene because it really is just solidifying everything I've said since the beginning of this season. Like Ray is old. He's not going to change. He has an old fashioned way of thinking. He got Karen when she was crippled, didn't have any money. He took care of her. He was her bank. And now the tables are turned. He's not adjusting to it. And he just basically has an issue with the fact that Karen is a self-sufficient person now and Karen's out doing her own thing like I've been saying this almost in every single review it's like it's kind of like the um the like the anti antithesis or like it's kind of like the swan song of the housewife show in general like you see these ladies come in and they're all kept women but then by like season three, season four, like these women have made more money, not even just from the show, but from their business ventures and um, club appearances and bookings than their actual husband. And then the husband starts to feel some type of way and then they end up in a divorce. Like it's kind of like the swan song of every single franchise in the Housewives show. And it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm going to go, I want to go a little deeper into it, but I don't have time in this review, but it's like every single... Every single um, Housewives cast has a divorce that happens because that said person on the show ends up finding their power and their man feels some type of way. Like, it's no difference between Ray. The only difference is, like, Ray has a very, very dated, old-fashioned sense of thinking. 
So we see Wendy, she's at home playing around with her family. And she then goes ahead and calls Giselle because she's having a Wine with Wendy event, which is a event for the Hughes Hugh Women of Potomac showcasing um, the issues around that they're facing in Potomac. And also it has something to do with them um, getting around and talking about the 2020 election. So she calls Giselle and she reveals to Giselle that she's inviting every single person but Monique, which, not surprised, you don't like her. And then she calls uh, Candace, and then Candace kind of goes to the fact that she has anxiety from the bullying and social media, and she just she just scared that like what's gonna happen next whenever I'm around Monique, blah blah blah, and I'm just like Candace, <sighs> take the L, girl. Like you just got your ass beat at this point. Like it's not that deep. Like maybe I'm being insensitive, but. <sighs> You got your ass beat, girl. Like, what? What else? What? What else would be doing with this situation? You're already gonna sue her. I feel like she's still mad at Karen for not taking sides, but at the same time, yes, Karen kind of like said, "Oh, I would press charges too." But like, you already had it in your mind that you were gonna press charges against Monique, Candace. Like at this point, like this storyline has just been. It's just like a beating a dead horse. It's been done to death. Like I'm really just over it. Like. Ugh. So we um, see the next scene, Giselle. She picks up R. Kelly from their daughter's presentation. And I wonder why Giselle wasn't there. Like, you don't have a job. What else were you doing? Like, why weren't you there to see your daughter present whatever she was presenting? But I saw this scene twice. I had no idea what they were talking about in this scene, y'all. Like, it started off with the fact that Giselle is um, kind of, like, the long distance is taking a toll on her. But... She's going to work with um, R. Kelly. Let me just call him R. Kelly. His name escapes me. Jamal, I guess. But she's going to work with him and she's going to see this through to the end. And they were just talking about basically like their relationship and how she is not um, the same old per. Like, the scene confused me. If you guys know what they were talking about, like, let me know. But them two are just not worth the time or the trouble. So, in the next scene, we see Monique getting ready for the night of the podcast. She sits down with her um, her team, and she basically just tells them, like, the like I just want this to be a smooth night. I don't want anybody asking me questions about the fight with Candace. And we see her one assistant that looks like a box of Fruit Loops uh, sit there and smirk and jot it down. And it's just like, hmm, what's going on, girl? So, we see Ashley shows up. She's the only one of the housewives that shows up to the event. And then Monique expresses that she is annoyed that Karen canceled at the last minute. She's like, I get that you're sick, but, like, you could have, like, pulled through and showed up for me. Like, nobody else is coming to this event. So, then Ashley then reveals, right before Monique is about to go on stage, that Karen is actually the one that kind of encouraged Candace to press charges. Now, Ashley, girl, I'm, I'm, I was starting, I'm liking you this season. You're being a little messy. But Karen did say that, so it is what it is, but like that was a little messy, Ashley, but I'm going to let you slide, girl. So um, the podcast starts, and the first thing is, the first thing that happens is the Fruit Loop lady asks um, Monique, like, how, how are things between her and Candace? And then Monique pauses for a second, she's like, you know what, just pray for us. And then she kind of gives the old girl the side eye, and it's like, oh, you're fired. So we then see uh, Robin and Juan, they're bowling with their two kids and Robin is basically nervous because her parents are about to show up and she is nervous at the fact that she's going to tell them about her recent tax issues. And I'm just like, unless you're asking for them to help you pay for your issues, why do you, like, wh like why are you nervous about this? Like, like, what's, like what's the big deal? But they sit down and eat, and then the parents show up, and then she spills the beans, like, oh, we have tax issues, and not even we, like, I, Robin, like, I have tax issues once again, and then the mom was like, oh, yeah, I found it on Instagram, and then the dad's just sitting there just like, okay, like, I mean, hey, you're just gonna have to pick yourself up by the bootstraps and get it paid off. Like, I, I really don't know what else Robin was expecting. Like, it was like, girl, nobody's gonna dig you out of this hole. So she then goes to the restroom and then Juan reveals to um, both the parents, basically ask um, 
them for her for her hand in marriage once again and then the parents are like okay cool like they're basically like did you guys ever really even break up to begin with i mean y'all been staying in the same house the whole time like i mean you have our approval like they her parents just don't care they're just like leave me out of y'all's bs like i am just just Ray Charles to the bullshit, basically. So, it's the day of Wendy's, um, the Wine with Wendy's event. And the girls all show up. Karen was looking really nice in this maroon leather ensemble. It was like, she always looks on point, y'all, out of everybody. We see Candace show up with these damn gladiator sandals with the wings on the back looking like Hermes. Like, I did not like... Them shoes, I and mean, Bravo was shady because them shoes looked a, um, a beauty supply store mess. And then we see um, later on, Robin shows up with this helmet with tracks glued to it. Like that wig was, it was really like the definition of shake and go. Like she looked like a struggling social worker that just got off of her shift. Like she looked uh, just a mess. Like I, mm-mm. So we see the Greed Eye Monster click. They end up bringing up the fact that um, Karen was the one that bailed Ray out of his tax issues. And I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because Gis Giselle talks about how, you know, I just want to be a friend to Karen. Like, I just feel like she's just going through it and all that. And I'm just like, Giselle, like, I'm surprised she even said that with a straight face. Like, when are you ever trying to be a friend to Karen? Like, them two, in my opinion, their relationship reminds me a lot of, um... Nini and um, Kim, Kim Zosiak from the Atlanta Housewives, that's what their relationship is. Except for the fact that, you know, Nini and Kim are best friends. Them two probably, like, never liked each other. They just tolerated each other because they're in the same circle. And they're both fighting for that queen position that Karen is holding, in my opinion. So, we then go on down. Candace decides to uh, take Karen to the side so she can kind of set her straight. Basically, come for the queen. And then they go downstairs and Candace is still mad at the fact that she refuses to hold Monique accountable and basically blames the whole entire fight on Monique. And once again, Candace, like, you played a part in it too. You egged on the situation. Granted, Monique was poking at you multiple times during the season, but you still didn't de-escalate the situation. Like, you still played along in the fight and you ended up getting dragged. Like, that's what happened. Like... It's like Candace, you could take accountability too. Just because you were the victim does not mean you didn't have you didn't play a part in the fight escalating to where it got to. But Karen basically sets her straight and says, like, with a mind so powerful, you so is your mouth. And she basically says, like, in so many words, like, last year you acted complete ass. And you were almost like cast away from the cast. Like nobody was really dealing with Candace by the end of last season. Up until I want to say the reunion. Like nobody saw for Candace including myself. So she's like the same way I had your back last season is the same way I'm having Monique's back. You guys are both my friends and I'm not about to pick a side. And I was with Karen 100%. Like y'all are grown. And Candace, you're trying to act like you're grown, girl. And, like, that's why she went to go try to set Karen straight because she wants so hard to prove that she's not this little girl that she acts. Because really, deep down inside, she is still a petulant child trying to, like, rise, arise from the um, grasp of her mom, basically. Like, that's what, Cand that's what Candace is struggling with. She's struggling with her mentally still being a child and her really trying to basically step her pussy up like I'm a grown ass woman like that's what Candace is struggling with this season and every time she tries to solidify like I'm I'm a grown bitch she gets put down once again because it's like girl you still have a lot to learn like you can't just elevate from being a child to a woman you got to go through those adolescent stages adolescent stages that you kind of missed out on and then we see Wendy come down and she basically tries to, once again, set Karen straight in the fact that Monique, this is all Monique's fault. Like, we need to hold Monique accountable. And then Karen, like, funny says, there's something medically wrong with Monique. And I'm just like, girl, ain't nothing wrong with Monique. Monique was very full and present when that fight happened. And then her and Wendy proceed to get into it. And then Karen kind of shuts it down like, you know what? I'm not going to escalate any situation with you, Wendy, but at the end of the day, I'm basically not going to pick sides. And then Karen, I mean, Candace and Wendy are like sitting there like kind of just like, you know what? Wendy's like, I got your back, Candace, no matter what. And mainly Wendy has her allegiance to Candace because she's the one that got 
Allegedly, Candace is the one that brought her into the show. And that's where the episode ends. Those are my views on this episode. I give it about a, a 6.5. Like, it, this episode was just aight to me. I, I want to say, if that fight didn't happen, y'all, this season would be completely boring. So, I think that fight is a gift from God that happened. Because other than that, like, what else is really going on this season? Like... Wendy, on the other hand, I don't know, like, I'm kind of just, like, 50-50 with her. Like, if she doesn't come back, I wouldn't really care. But if she does come back, cool, it is what it is. But she's doing a little bit too much for me for her first season. But that's just how I'm feeling right now. Maybe that could change later on. But that's my reviews on this episode. Be sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to come at you guys with some more content. Take care.